Hello builders, welcome to another video. I am Laszlo and today I'm going to show you a new feature of EventBridge called EventBridge Scheduler. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. So, I will de demo a new feature of uh, EventBridge called Scheduler, which was released last uh, November. Uh, but before that, allow me to just uh, say a few words about it. So let's see what it is. Uh, EventBridge Scheduler uh, will allow you to create, run and manage scheduled tasks at scale. Now the tasks that you schedule with this can be one-time tasks or recurrent tasks without you having to provision any of the underlying infrastructure. It also supports time window schedules meaning that your schedule is only active between certain dates and hours. Before this feature was released, we already had a something similar called EventBridge Events, which evolved from CloudWatch Events, but it had a few shortcomings. For example, um, you could only schedule uh, recurrent events, you couldn't do a one-time event, and besides that, there were some other limitations. Uh, so here we have this uh, uh, tab table uh, which compares the scheduler with EventBridge rules and you see that you have quite different quotas. Um, also the throughput, the event invocation throughput is different. You have much uh, more options in regards to targets that you can use in EventBridge scheduler. You have time expressions like at, cron and rate and um, you can use time zones. Uh, you can create one-time schedules, uh, time window schedules. There's no need for an event bus. And also you have a quota consumption of uh, uh, 1 million schedules. So uh, co uh, rule quota consumption of 1 million schedules. So uh, let's see also see some use cases for uh, EventBridge Scheduler. So you could use this to uh, send out reminders. For example, maybe your customers have to pay their, their uh, subscription. You have to send out reminder before that happens, before uh, it's due. So you could use it for that. Or you could cancel the subscription uh, on schedule after, let's say, 14 days if he didn't pay or um, uh, if he cancels the subscription, you set it that uh, you set a schedule to cancel the um, account uh, when the subscription ends or something similar. You could also automate some things like turning on and off development environments to save costs. And of course, uh, there are many, many more uh, things you could use it for. I'm sure you can find some very good um, use cases in your projects as well. So let's see this in action. So let's go to the EventBridge console and here on the left side menu you can find the schedules uh, menu item and schedule group. So schedule group you could use this to group your schedules uh, um, together based on for example uh, a particular application uh, that you have uh, in your uh, company or things like that. Let's go to schedules and actually let's create a schedule. So you do that from uh, here with this create schedule button. Uh, first we're going to create it here from the console and then I'm going to show you also how to create it via a SAM template. So infrastructure as code. And you will be able to um, use that. I'm going to post the uh, link to the GitHub where you can find the code. So let's call the schedule cons uh, schedule from console. Um, we are not going to add a description. We are going to use the default schedule group. And you see here we have uh, uh, the possibility to use a one-time schedule or a recurring schedule. With a one-time schedule, it will send it uh, once at the date and hour that you specify here. And you can also choose the time zone. So this is very useful because you can uh, match this to your user's time zone. So if you want it uh, to send for the user at uh, midnight, then it will be the user's um, time zone and uh, it will send it at midnight for him. 
Um, you also have the option to use a so-called uh, flexible time window, meaning that uh, if you set it off, the um, task will be triggered at exactly the hour that you set here. Um, but uh, if you set a flexible time window of 15 minutes, it means that the task will be triggered around uh, 12, but um, um, it can be even 15 minutes after. So uh, this is useful if you have to trigger thousands or hundreds of thousands of the events and you don't want all of them to go out at the same time in order not to overwhelm some uh, downstream system. So you can use this flexible time window for those cases. Now um, I'm going to create a recurring schedule um, and here we have two options. We have cron-based schedule and rate-based schedule. So with the cron-based schedule uh, you can set up a cron expression just as you would uh, do it in um, a regular cron job. Uh, you can specify minutes, hours, days of months and so on. Uh, you can all use the flexible time window here as well. Or you could create a rate-based schedule, and this is what I'm going to create. Um, this means that uh, I'm going to send at a rate of um, three um, minutes. So every three minutes, I'm going to send uh, a task. I mean, I'm going to trigger a task. Uh, and I'm going to turn uh, off the flexible time window for this case. So every three minutes, uh, this uh, um, schedule will trigger uh, an event. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, um, what we want to do here, we want to set the time zone, we want to set the start date. So I'm going to set this at um, 6 uh, and 12 minutes, that's a few minutes from now. And then also an end date. Um, that will be today at uh, 7 p.m. So this means that this um, schedule is only valid between these two um, um, start, the, in between the start date and the end date and time. Click on next and then here we can choose the target. Um, here we are offered a few frequently used APIs. For example, we could send an SNS notification. Let's say you want to send out an email for your users, uh, notification, uh, you could do it from here, uh, you choose a SNS topic uh, and uh, you could set it up. But I'm not going to choose this, I'm going to use a lambda function. But before I do that, let me show you all the targets. So you can see that you can use uh, lots of targets, so basically every API, almost every API um, from AWS is supported and let's say if you want to trigger an S3, uh, create bucket uh, API call, you could do that and you provide uh, a bucket name uh, and uh, other parameters that are required by that API call and it would trigger it. So <clears throat> you see there are pages and pages of uh, things uh, of APIs that you could uh, trigger from here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the frequently used APIs and I'm going to choose <coughs> AWS Lambda. And uh, I'm going to choose the Lambda function which I've created earlier, scheduled from console. So let's look at it. Um, it's a pretty simple function. Uh, it will just uh, take the event from, um, from the um, schedule and display it and we are going to be able to see it in the logs. And uh, uh, let's go back and we also want to add the payload. So this will be the event that will be passed down to the Lambda and action will be create something, for example. Um, okay, click on next. Here we have, uh, we can enable the schedule, we can set the retry policy, dead letter queue for failed events which could not be delivered encryption and also we have uh, the possibility to create a new role or use an existing role. So I'm going to leave it at uh, uh, create new role, click on next. I have the overview screen and then click on create schedule. So that should not take too long. 
um, and then I'm my uh, schedule will be active. So let's see. Um, usually takes only a couple of seconds, and it is ready. So let's go to the target. Uh, you see the the schedule is every three minutes. The target is scheduled from console. This is the lambda function. If I click it, uh, it, it will go to the lambda function. It also has the payload that I have added and uh, the role retry policy. Um, it, it is retained for maximum one day and it is retried 185 times. I didn't set a dead letter queue. I could do that, but uh, I didn't do it uh, for this uh, demo. And then um, soon enough, our Lambda function should be triggered by this event, this, uh, this schedule, sorry. So you see, uh, this is the schedule. <clears throat> if we open it, we can see um, some details about it. When is the start time, the end time, uh, and so on, and the time zone. And um, if we go to the Lambda function, um, probably you know that you can go here to the Monitor tab and you can view the CloudWatch logs from here. Click on uh, it and open it in a new um, tab. And here we would be able to see the logs from the Lambda function once it gets triggered. So I'm going to pause the video and wait a bit until some events show up here. So it should trigger every three minutes. So our first event appeared uh, in the log stream. So you see the time, it's exactly what I've set. Um, uh, 6 uh, 12 um, uh, p.m. and if I open the log stream uh, I'm going to be able to see that console log that I've put in and I've received that payload that I have um, um, configured in the uh, schedule. Now uh, every three minutes a new log will appear here because every three minutes this lambda function will be uh, triggered. Uh, we're not going to wait for that. I'm going to show you also how you do this from a SAM template, so from infrastructure as code. So let me bring uh, this up. And here I have a CloudFormation template. Uh, it's not a CloudFormation, it's actually a, actually a SAM template. So this will create a Lambda function, another one. Uh, this is the Lambda function. Uh, this will also receive a scheduled event from the scheduler and it will log it. Uh, so it's a simple Lambda function, just as the other one. And here we have the template, which references this uh, Lambda function uh, here in um, the app.js. Um, and then uh, I have this uh, uh, event attached to the Lambda function. So it's a scheduled event. Uh, you use it like this. Uh, you have to use this type schedule ver version 2, schedule v2. And you have to set the uh, properties here I'm setting uh, it uh, schedule expression of a rate every two minutes. Um, I'm going to use a flexible time window now uh, and uh, maximum window emits it will be 15 minutes. I'm also going to specify here the uh, time. I will have to change here to um, let's see 16, 15, okay and um, here I'm going to set it at uh, 17, okay. Um, time zone and then the input uh, action do something. So it's a slightly different input that I'm giving here. So we can see that in action. So this is all, this is what, all that you have to do. I'm going to post the link to the repository where you can find this below the video. So you can check that. Uh, now I'm just going to deploy it. Um, to the account with SAM deploy and uh, it should not take long. Uh, either way, I'm going to pause the video a little bit until this uh, is created, but it should not take more than uh, one, two minutes um, for this to be created. So our schedule is ready. Let's look at what happened here. So we have um, the CloudFormation stack successfully created. Let's uh, look at it. So I'm going to go to cloud formation here and you're going to see it created um, EventBridge scheduler uh, uh, stack in which we have um, 
the lambda function, some IAM rules, and the schedule. And if we go back to the scheduler and to the schedules, let's refresh. And here you have the scheduled function, scheduled event source. This is created through that SAM template. And if we look at it, we are going to be able to see the target, which is a lambda function that was uh, created for us as well. So let's go back to functions, refresh. And you see this is the lambda function. Let's go to that function and uh, let's go to the monitor tab, view the CloudWatch logs, because this should already be active and we should get some events pretty soon. So there's no events yet because we have that flexible time um, uh, window. We're going to wait a bit more so uh, maybe some events will show up here. So quite a few minutes have passed. Let's refresh. Let's see if there's something for us to watch here. And um, actually we have a log stream here. Let's open it. And you see that we have two, um, two events here. This is the one at uh, 628 and another one here at 6.30. So this is uh, happening at every two minutes. So because that's, what, uh, that's the rate that I have put here in, in this um, schedule, rate two minutes, and it should go until 7 p.m. So there's also that 15 minutes flexible uh, time interval. I refreshed it. Oh, this is the... Yeah, schedule from console. This is not the, this is the one that we have from the cloud formation or the SAM template. So uh, this should um, um, have more events coming in soon. I'm not going to wait for that. You understand the idea. This is what I wanted to show you today. How you set up um, uh, events, um, sch uh, uh, scheduled events with um, uh, event bridge scheduler. Um, Hopefully uh, it was a uh, useful video for you. I hope you liked it. If you did, uh, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, and I hope to see you soon with another video here on majestic.cloud.